Before we get into the video, I want to take just a quick second because I feel like at this point it's pretty much impossible not to mention the events that have impacted my own community here in Minneapolis with the murder of George Floyd and the ongoing impact of systemic racism. While I don't feel qualified to insert my own voice into this topic, I do want to recognize the impact on our community and I want to provide some links to local nonprofits if anyone wants to provide some help to the communities most hurt, which we'll be donating to ourselves as well. Specifically, the Lake Street Council who's using 100% donations to help rebuild the most impacted area. Four years ago, I started a project that, as always, ran into continuous challenges. I released the first part of the video incomplete in 2017 and promised a follow-up once I got the system solved and smoothly flowing. My goal in it was simple, a non-intrusive year-round indoor garden that would provide me with a continuous supply of fresh, nutritional produce from the convenience of my own apartment, regardless of the season. Several years later, and going through many iterations and evolutions, I continuously ran into failure again and again, mainly because of the demands of every other project preventing me from giving it the right amount of attention to maintain, problem solve, and tweak my setup. In the end, all it took was a global pandemic and a government mandated order to stay at home to finally force me to slow down and focus on and eventually get a working system finally figured out. This is the long journey this challenge has taken. First up, one of the main challenges I faced with my very first version of the Closet Garden was the consistent delivery of water and nutrients, which was a leading cause of the death of many of my plants before. A viewer sent me plans for an NFT system built out of PVC pipes, which seemed like it would solve many of my previous issues, so I went to work right away putting it together. This NTF system, or nutritional film technique, uses a reservoir at the bottom which contains water seized with the nutrients, which is then pumped up to the tubes where it floods and soaks the roots of the plant, and then drains back out, continuously cycling and feeding the plant. Then to plant the seeds into a rock wool growing medium inside of net cups. Once they sprout, they are transferred into the tubes. Once set, and once they have roots long enough, they should be good to be left alone to grow on their own. One of the first things I noticed is not all the plants grew well in this method. And after the first few months, I found I was left predominantly with just the basil plants mixed in with a few other greens. Yeah, no dirt. No pesticides. Good to go. Big old salad. So we're doing pretty good, but got a little bit of a leak here. So, gonna have to get that patched. So just cover everything with another layer of sealant and hopefully it holds. Despite numerous attempts at patching it, leaks would still be a continual issue throughout the setup's existence. Still leaking. Awesome. After my initial plants of greens died off with only the basil remaining, I generated a new batch of greens to replace them, but they eventually ended up meeting a similar fate. Then in 2018, we reached the point of getting our own small studio space. Alexa, turn on grow house. Moving it there allowed me to keep a better eye on it. Well, also the advantage of not having to pay the utilities for it. Alexa, turn on grow house. But first, the leaking really needed to be fixed. When assembling it the first time, I had made a small mistake in how the drain tubes were connected to the tubes, so it took a drastic action of cutting it all off and completely redoing that segment, this time correctly. Alright, 
Let's give it a shot. Alexa, turn on Grow House. However, even then, this failed to solve the issue, and the end result of all the leaks caused a nasty black mold that had to be removed and repaired. Eventually ended up replacing the entire back wall with a waterproof laminate layer, and then once again replaced the ends of the tube, this time with a more simplified system that had fewer joints to potentially leak from. In the process of this, only one single basil plant yet remained, and then it eventually died from the shock of changing everything to the new setup. This new configuration worked much better for some time, although any plants that had short roots tended to die before it could reach the flow of the water below, so it made it a little bit difficult to get it up and running. At the end of my first closet video, I played with the idea of adding algae to the mix to allow a more nutritionally complete meal. Generously, Elia Ross of Spira reached out and sent me a free kit of theirs to try out and grow my own nutritional algae. I got a bucket. It's two buckets. Hey, personal notes. Life in a bottle. You get nutrient powder, saltpeter, potash, sea salt. So the things I've made. Somebody likes the box. Fortunately, he didn't make any time frame requests. So hopefully he doesn't mind that it's taken nearly two years to publish anything about it. <laughs> there's a hole in my bucket. Now there's a spigot. Plants need oxygen. It's up to here to 35 degrees. Now, now we have the food. Five gallons of distilled water. Tira, life in a bottle. Soon to be life in a bucket. Enjoy your new home. That does not smell good. 20 drops from Iron Dropper Bottle. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Food was supposed to go in first. Oh, fizzy. Should be good to go. Whoa, pretty. Huh? Right. We'll let her go. See if I can eat it. Got a second bottle. Like everything else, it eventually made it into the studio and has sat there unattended, mostly forgotten for two years, where it remains yet to this day. I'll be checking that out a bit later and see what's still in there at this point and possibly eat it. Meanwhile, at the new studio and with extra space to expand the garden, I decided to explore a new hydroponics system, aeroponics. Aeroponics is a method of growing a plant where the roots grow down into a container, which then has a sprayer, which intermittently sprays the roots directly with water and nutrients. these setups for some other projects, such as beans to make jelly beans and beer from, but also for growing additional salad greens and tomatoes for the salad. Also in addition to the aeroponics, experimented with an actual indoor soil growing method using a drip system, which I was hoping to use to grow some root crops such as potatoes, sweet potatoes, and sugar beets. For it, several buckets had a drain drilled into it with a plug attached, which is then covered with a filter and a layer of rocks to help improve drainage, and then are filled in with dirt. The downside of indoor gardening in the winter is sometimes the soil you buy is still frozen solid. The buckets are then all connected and drained into the reservoir below, where it then gets cycled back up periodically. Then I let some potatoes start to sprout, cut them up, and then planted them, as well as some sugar beet seeds.
once they grew to a decent size, I added the drip system that pumps the water back up to them and keeps them routinely watered. I also repeated the same setup in some trays to attempt to grow some barley. The setup seemed to work fairly well, but had a few issues. First, once I left the country for a vacation last year, all my barley died when the rest of the team forgot about them. Secondly, the use of soil indoors caused a nasty infection of fungus gnats in the office that was nearly impossible to get rid of. And lastly, the root crops never seemed to be able to fully mature in the small buckets. They did, however, get a decent lead so that once they were transferred into an outdoor space in the spring, they then produced a decent crop. With this large setup, we were able to get a few decent salads from it. Over like everything else, eventually the reservoir would run dry without me noticing it in time, or many other potential issues would arise when I was distracted in other projects, and soon was once again left with a nearly entirely dead indoor garden, and was basically ready to give up on this project and cut my losses. I decided to go a different direction, and rather than trying to make something that's really high efficient and non-intrusive, which kind of led to it being neglected and forgotten in the corner, especially when it was in my home closet. And here at the small studio, it kind of created a rather ugly backdrop. Instead, I tried to go with more of an aesthetic aesthetically pleasing, kind of just a green wall plant, and something we could both film against and also improve the aesthetics of the actual studio. Kind of the end result of four years of trial and error. I built the actual setup of all this and changed the plan at the beginning of the year, but then I kind of entered the same cycle of trying to get things started and then getting distracted, not having enough time. But then nature kind of ran its course and changed that with the uh, whole coronavirus outbreak, which forced me to be locked at home. Before all that started to happen, I decided I'm just gonna double down on gardening and focus on something a little more positive to help elevate my mood, and that's just growing things. So I kind of turned my apartment into a nursery and grew just a ton of plants, both for the indoor garden here and also for the outdoor garden we have at a few different locations. So the end result was pretty good and got everything transplanted back here. The NPF system is still here. I reduced it a bit to just two tubes. Overall, not my favorite system. A lot of times plants would do good for a little bit and then they would just dry up and die. In contrast though, I found the aeroponics to be a lot better. It's a lot less sensitive because it's actually spraying the water up and that has a lot more flexibility on the length of the roots. So I've had a lot more success with that, both with greens and other plants. They're almost to the stage, the tomatoes are going pretty good. Uh, I also have a cucumber, uh, did some cowpeas. I also found I really like the drip system. It's very simple and straightforward. However, the soil, as I discovered, can produce gnats. So avoiding that was really important. And I kind of went full circle and back with the grow medium I started with which is coconut core. It doesn't have nutrients, so it needs to be cycled with the water with nutrients added, um, but also has the advantage that you can't overwater it. So that allows me to do the setup here where I have a couple different troughs all lined up and they have a tube that's running through it. Twice a day then it turns on and just pumps it full of water, floods everything, hydrates the coconut core. The excess kind of pours off, holes drilled into the bottom of it, so they pour down through that into the trough below. These drain all into one down here and that one drains back into the reservoir. So that produces the next cycle where everything's able to get enough water, roughly 12 hours between each watering that allows it to dry out. I found this to be a lot more foolproof Roof, um, had a lot fewer plants actually die from this. I have a very similar setup on the back here in the corner, has a variety of different pouches, and then I have a tube running up to the top, and that pumps water into the top, which all slowly drains down and saturates everything. So everything just kind of cycles through, everything gets plenty of water, kind of a maximum growing potential. Mostly it's salad greens of various sources. We got lettuce, arugula, I got some spinach, and a few other varieties I don't remember the name of. So a few other plants that are more for other projects outside of the salad. Here I have a row of oats. In the pouches up above, I have some chamomile for tea, and along pretty nicely. Also some cilantro, which may be for the salad, maybe for something else. This is kind of the end result of four years of trial and error, and it's still an ongoing challenge. And probably one of the biggest things I've learned with doing hydroponics 
is that it's not that straightforward. It's not quite the uh, hands-off project I was hoping it would be. With hydroponics, everything is more controlled. If anything goes wrong, you're risking complete failure. Things can get clogged, lights can burn out, balances of nutrients can get off. So many different things can go wrong. So it, it definitely requires a lot of attention. Other people's results will vary. They might have better success with some of the ones I didn't. Probably have a lot of recommendations. I got a lot of recommendations the first time, so I look forward to the ones I'm gonna get this time. But this really beautiful green wall is not just for looks, it's actually functional and for eating. So let's make a salad and see how it tastes. Break down some of the costs of actually making your own continuous salad. I've had the LG at the studio for the past two years and kind of just shoved it in random places and forgot about it. Uh, I was just gonna throw it away a little bit ago, um, but I actually checked on it and it was not not too bad smelling, so I think it's actually still going, still alive, and uh, it's pretty impressive considering I basically neglected it for several years now. So let's check it out and see if it's edible. All right, so inside is not, not as bad as you might expect. It actually looks probably like it should. Get algae on tap. Let's give it a pull. It's like a big blob in here. Is it alive? through and counted and I have about 30 different heads of lettuce that are growing here. To keep replenishing them, you're supposed to harvest roughly half the leaves and then it should take about two weeks to replenish that. So that means I have roughly two heads of lettuce I can eat each day to make a salad. So I collected that and I collected a few other leaves just to get a, a little taste of everything. I also collected some cilantro, a little bit of taste to it. And then I also, chamomile I'm actually growing for a tea. Apparently you can also eat it. Um, the leaves are a little bit bitter, but the heads supposedly have kind of an apple-y flavor. And then for the microgreens, I have four different ones going at a time. The seeds I'm growing are radishes and turnips, which are a little bit quicker. So they should take roughly eight days to do a complete cycle. So that basically amounts to a salad roughly this size. It'd be fairly good. We have the cucumbers and tomatoes. They aren't ripe yet, and they're kind of just a, an extra garnish whenever they're available. I'm not sure what it would take to like have a consistent flow of them. So I have some of the algae that's been growing for several years. It makes it a lot more nutritious than just the salad by itself. Um, however, I've been told that it doesn't taste very good, which is kind of why I haven't done anything with it, because I've been a little afraid to taste it. All right, let's dig in. Pretty good. Yeah. Very fresh. Let's try one of these chamomile flowers. Interesting very fruity apple flavor to it. It's really good. It's definitely greens. Not strong flavor. There are a few bitter ones and sharp ones. The greens are, I believe, the radishes. So they got a nice bite to them. It's like the one thing I remember from the last video of this is everybody complaining about the mouth noises. We'll do a special cut on our secondary channel. I'm just chewing. Try the algae. It's a really strong green color. It looks cool. Not a super strong smell. It isn't what I would call pleasant. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. It's surprisingly flavorless, but like just a hint of like fishiness. I would recommend it, but I can see mixing it with other things to kind of give it actual flavor. Let's break down the cost of how much the salad actually cost. So the upfront cost of building all of this and kind of going through a few different iterations and all that was a roughly $980. There was a fair amount of redundancy there of having to try something and then redo it. Probably a little bit less to just straight build what I have right now. In terms of kind of ongoing expenses, we have things like buying more seeds because everything will eventually need to be replenished and replaced. So just general seeds for the greens and the salads are estimating under 20 bucks probably for the seeds. But then for the microgreens, they require a lot more seeds because you're growing a lot of them and you're eating them every day. So that breaks down to roughly $150 for the microgreen seeds. And then all the plants as it's hydroponics require nutrients, which comes in about bulk size of gallon jugs. So that's about $50 a year for that. And then for energy, I was experimenting with some of the purple lights, which only produce light that the plants actually need and kind of a little bit more efficient. But because we're going for more of an aesthetic, the purple wasn't very pleasant to look at. So we have daylight balanced. Um, they're still pretty efficient though. So rough estimate of how much electricity it costs to run the, the fans, the pumps, the actual lights is uh, roughly $380 a year. So for an actual salad, 
Assuming we're able to produce one salad per day, which in theory you should be able to, the actual cost per salad would be $1.66 compared to what you normally get at a grocery store, or usually around $3. And that doesn't include the gas of going to the store to get it or the electrical expense to refrigerate it until you're ready to actually eat it. Things that you really don't need to do with this because the food is right where you are, fresh and ready to go. So that's the price, assuming you have to pay for electricity. But one of the big reasons I moved it to the studio space here is because our rent includes that. So excluding electricity to produce a single salad breaks down to about 62 cents per salad. So with electricity, it, it'll take roughly two years to pay for all the upfront expenses. With us not having to pay for electricity, this setup will pay for itself in a little bit over a year. But of course, there's one expense I didn't include is worth mentioning, and that's time. So obviously this takes a lot of time to set up, operate, and maintain, which I, I don't even know how to calculate that. And it's been several years now just to get to an operational level. So it's been a huge expense that I'm not calculating, but if you view it as a hobby, it's not too bad. If you factor it in, I'm sure it costs a lot more than the $3 salad you get at the store. So it's been kind of a journey to learn everything about the hydroponics and trying to get every little thing working here. I feel like I've learned a lot, but I still have a lot to learn as I continue to develop this. I look forward to having a fresh salad. And after being on lockdown with Corona, I think it couldn't have come at a better time. Time to lose some weight. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.